My name is Richard Willis, and I'm a research professor at Auburn University in the National Center for Asphalt Technology. I was in Gainesville um, a few weeks, actually a couple months ago now, um, talking about sustainability. And one of the things that we talked about that day was the triple bottom line approach to what sustainability was, looking at we needed to be concerned about the environment, economic growth, but also social equity. And I showed a diagram at that time that had all those parts of sustainability together and where they came to intersect was that's where sustainability was and only where they, those three things intersected was where sustainability was. And one of the people in the audience asked me a question that any engineer probably would. Is that to scale? Because what happened was the sustainability portion was very, very small. And I got to thinking, and the, my response to that question was, actually, it's probably larger than it should be in real reality. The ultimate goal of sustainability is to do good, is to make our actions that we're having today have a positive impact on today and in the future. If we look at where we are as, as a transportation industry and really as the world, um, to borrow a phrase by one of my friends, Steve Munch, professor at the University of Washington, we're in a do less bad mentality. Um, instead of doing good, we're taking more from the earth than we're replacing. Um, we're not necessarily always worried about the impacts we're having on the environment. One of the things that I've, I've come across recently was the ability and the chance to start coaching three-year-old soccer. And one of the things, if you've ever seen three-year-old soccer, it's not even controlled chaos. Um, I have a son who's out there playing. In most days, I'm, if I can keep him out of the net, it's a win. I'm not necessarily worried about him scoring goals. What I'm worried about is him learning the tools so that one day he may be able to play soccer. You know what, he's out there thinking he's David Beckham and I'm worried about are we gonna kill anybody because of the collisions that are happening on the field. Right now in the, in the transportation field, and this is asphalt, this is concrete, this is everybody, we're playing three-year-old soccer in many ways. We're, we're trying to, to do less bad. We're trying to stay out of the net and one day hopefully we're going to learn those tools. We're going to learn those skills that help us approach what sustainability truly is. But we're not there right now. If we think about infrastructure performance, there are numerous tools that, we, that are being developed there are numerous things that are happening. Uh, if you look at the, the concrete industry and the asphalt industry, both of them are really pushing for performance-based specifications on a material level, where we can get in there, we can play mad scientists with, with fly ash and slag and, and wrap and rass and rubber, and we prove that this material is going to perform. And I don't have to worry about meeting a recipe specification. But you know what? We're not quite there yet. If we look at a concept that, that was talked about earlier, the Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide, if, if you compare the televisions from 1960 to the television you could go down to Walmart today and buy, the ones in 1960 were 20 inches. If you were holding your tongue in the right position, you had your aluminum foil on your rabbit ears the right way, you might get two channels. Today, you can go down, buy one for a couple hundred bucks. You could pick it up with one hand. It would stream wireless internet from your house, put 3D pictures on it. But many of the ways we're designing pavements are still based on that 1960s television. So we came up with the concepts of putting mechanistic, con uh, mechanistic empirical pavement design guide together. And from what I've heard, the concrete industry, it's working well. For lack of a better way, the asphalt's Design guide's abysmal. The rutting model, there are times you put a single load on the pavement, you've, Im you've immediately got four millimeters of rutting. And that's just not reality. The cracking model's even worse. And what makes it even more challenging is when we start to look at performance measures like cracking and IRI, well, the IRI is a function of the rutting and the cracking model, which just makes it exponentially bad. 
And so while these tools are being developed, we've got to go through local calibration. I'm not even starting to talking about recycled materials which weren't considered in the performance of the design guide at all. Polymers for asphalt binders weren't considered in terms of performance predictions. And these are all serious drawbacks from really assessing true performance of what our pavements might be. So while the tools are, are being developed, we're learning the skills, we're developing the models, but they're not quite there yet. We think about other things like our life cycle assessment models. And, and this is one of my pet peeves, I guess, is, is a lot of people attribute life cycle assessment to complete sustainability, and it's not. It's just one facet of what sustainability really is. If you have that economic, environmental, and social aspect, life cycle assessment just gives you one leg of that stool. You could throw in maybe life cycle cost, and it might give you another leg, but that's still enough to fall over. Without us putting in the effort to, to really look at social aspects as well, we're not going to ever be able to judge what true sustainability is and the performance of what that sustainability is. But if we look back at, at life cycle assessment, we're, we're gaining ground, we're taking steps, we're learning more every single day about what it is to, what contributes to things like pavement vehicle interaction carbon emissions in terms of uh, material production, the construction, even end of life issues. But there are still numerous questions that are out there in front of us. We're starting to understand things like how does stiffness, how does the texture of the pavement, how does the smoothness of the road, how does all that come together to give me a better performing pavement? But the challenge is, most of the work that's being done isn't completely 100% comprehensive, including everything. Is PVI is one of the most complicated phenomenon that we have. When we start to think about the, the engine of the vehicle, the aerodynamics, the traction on the road, the, what happens with the pavement. And when we try to start singling things out, it makes it difficult because they all interact together in a unique system. One of the things that, that we might be able to move towards is instead of judging sustainability by a singular life cycle assessment or, or by life cycle cost, is take a model from the building and what the building industry has done. In the late 90s and the early 2000s, what came about? Lead. And what it was done, it wasn't to say one is better than the other, but it put forth a challenge to people who are making buildings to say, how far can you push that envelope? How green can you make this building? How sustainable can you make it? Because lead covers things like economics, the environmental aspects, the social aspects of the work environment, and there are pavement rating systems that are being developed. And while we're fine-tuning these models, while we're, while we're trying to progress to maybe minor league soccer one day, let's use some tools that are available. That can be worked to say, hey, let's not make it a competition. Let's just make ourselves better. Let's do it for ourselves. Let's do it for our industries. And let's do it to help the people of the future that are coming. Because sustainability is, is about changing our mindset from where we are right now, just living our lives five, meter, or five inches in front of our face and looking well beyond that. The old Greek proverb stands true more today probably than it did then. A society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they will never sit. <laughs>